By the end of this video, you will know seven important terms when it comes to Dynamo. So first, what's a Dynamo script and why do we call the scripts in Dynamo script? In order to know what a Dynamo script is, first I have to define what is a script. So a computer script, any computer script, is a list of commands that are executed in a certain program. Scripts are normally used to automate processes. They are also used to generate web pages. But if you actually look at the script, it looks something like code, written code, between parentheses, However, if you look at Dynamo, and I'm going to show you this, if you open Dynamo, right, I have it here in Spanish, so it's at the Manage tab, and then you have to go to Dynamo, you will see something completely different to what you will normally consider a script to be. You will see something like this, okay? Notes with little boxes all around. However, even if it looks a bit different, these boxes are working exactly like commands. Even though they are not coding commands, they are also commands that are automating processes in the computer. So this is why we call this a Dynamo script. So it's only a list of commands, or in this case, a list of nodes or boxes that automate certain tasks. This is why we call this a Dynamo script. A Dynamo script is normally saved up in the extension dyd and you can use one Dynamo script for different Revit files. You can use it on different Revit files and Revit will read it. And as you execute it, you execute it here, down here. If you got it in automatic, then it's autom automatically running. And if you got it in manual, then you have to press actually press execute in order for it to work. Let's go straight to the second essential term, which is Dynamo Core. <laughs> Why do we talk about the core? What is the Dynamo core? Let's see. If you go to the Dynamo website, 2021, where are you? Get Dynamo. So here you have dynamobin.org slash download slash. And here you can see all the different versions that you have in which Dynamo will work. So now you have Dynamo Revit on its own. You have here also Dynamo Revit. And it's like, what? I think this is wrong. Here it should say Dynamo Sandbox, but okay. Then you have Dynamo Revit, then you have Civil 3D, Alias Design Format, Advanced Steel, Strat Robot Structural Analysis, and Dynamo Studio, and more to come. Okay, more coming soon. So what's the core? What's Dynamo core? It's actually the basic features of Dynamo which enable it to run independently from other programs like Revit or Civil 3D. You can also use Dynamo in Revit, Civil 3D, and there, it has specific components, but you can also run Dynamo on its own with Dynamo Sandbox and the core are the essential nodes that are included in this Dynamo Sandbox so that it will run. And they are independent from other programs like Revit or Civil 3D or the other ones down below, which right now nobody is using yet <laughs> or almost close to no one. That's basically why the core is so important. You want to know in which version you have your core Dynamo so that you know what version you have installed on your computer. From Revit 2020 you don't have to worry about this at all because Dynamo will self-install in your computer and you will have the latest version that your Revit allows. Okay, that's about the Dynamo Core. I want to talk English like this because I'm in Spanish, you know? Let's go! What is Dynamo Studio? <laughs> I already show you what, where Dynamo Studio is. You have Dynamo Sandbox, which is where Dynamo should be on its own. And here it should say Dynamo Sandbox, okay? But also you have down here Dynamo Studio, which says it's a visual programming platform that functions independently of any other applications. My problem with Dynamo Studio, however, is that it only reaches version 1.3.0, which is dreadfully old. Because now, if you look at Dynamo Revit, for instance, and you watch all the Dynamo builds, you will see here that we have Dynamo 2.11.1. 1. 
And where is Dynamo Studio? Where's the 130? Somewhere down here. So look at all the other versions that we have here. However, this Dynamo Studio was a payment option. I don't know if it's buy or try. Yeah, it's still for a payment a payment option. Well, not, not deprecated, but it's sold. Here you have the Dynamo Revit. Perhaps it's because you can download and load packages from it, but you can also download packages from Dynamo Sandbox. So really the studio runs independently until 1.3.0. And that's the difference. Let's go to the fourth essential term when it comes to Dynamo, which is known. You probably have heard what's this note, what this note does several times. So what's a node and why is everyone talking about nodes? A node is just one of these boxes which actually is doing an action in the Dynamo script. When you say I'm going to put in some geometry nodes because I think it would be easier, more visible, when you put here point by coordinates, if you execute it, you'll actually get a point because this node is executing a command which is an action. In this case, we have the point 000, 000 round down here and why do we have 000 because the node is doing an action and the action gets the inputs from this side and does the action and gets the output the result from the other side now the node does many kinds of actions okay not just introducing points <laughs> i did this just to illustrate a point but you normally get to join multiple nodes in order to get multiple actions. For instance, I could introduce a line. Now, if I introduce a line by with two exact same points, the line won't be generated and the node will be yellow. We will have a mistake, an error here. But if I change this and instead of starting and ending at the same point, I join here, I introduce a different point with a different number, here I have the line which is generated. So the node is just really a command that is making some particular action and it's how Dynamo introduces the command. Every different action you want to introduce in Dynamo normally has its corresponding node. Now there are nodes that are used more than others but I'm going to introduce it farther along in the course. Okay, so right now I just want you to keep this in your mind and note is just an action. Where can you get the no notes from? Well, you have this menu here where you can actually look for your notes. For example, get parameter value by name is here. You can also search for your notes by opening these tabs and looking for your specific notes. Now, fifth essential term. <laughs> what is a list? What is a list? So Dynamo normally works with lists. Here you have your first list. I'm going to introduce it to you. Hi, this is a list and it's composed of two items, which are number 13 and number 24. Right now you have a list with two levels. Okay, the first level are the items, which are 13 and 24 right here. And the second level is the whole list, which contains these two items. In Dynamo, we normally work with lists either that or dictionaries. You should keep in mind that lists are one of the most important components when it comes to working with Dynamo. And the important thing is knowing at which level of the list we are working on. Normally, Dynamo automatically chooses the top level in order to work with it. If you have come this far in the video, please could you do me a huge favor and leave a red circle emoji down in the comments. Why? Well, it helps me a lot to know that you have actually reached this part of the video and also it helps the algorithm consider that this video is a good one and it helps us a lot as we are a new channel. So thank you so much for leaving this emoji down. Let's go to the sixth essential term when it comes to Dynamo. This one is called lacing. What is lacing and why is it so important? So I've changed this a little bit and I have right now two sets of numbers, okay? Here I have like 13, 24 and 17, 20, 20, 20, which are these ones on the top. You can see which ones I'm selecting because if I select the node, then they appear here in blue. And I have the other set of numbers down below, which are these ones. 
and I have three points, another three points, and I'm getting three lines, and you thought, okay, this is completely normal, three points, and another three points, get the result of three lines. And actually, I'm going to get four here. Sorry, I'm getting you, I'm driving you a little bit mad, but this is just to illustrate a point. So three points on the top, and four times points on the bottom. As you can see right here on geometry, section. As you notice, I'm changing from notes to geometry with just one click of my mouse in this panel, right on the top and the right top corner. So if I have here three points and down here I have four points, I'm just getting three lines. Why? Because the automatic lacing just joins the first point of this list with the first point of this other list, the second point of this list, the second point of this other second list and there's third point of the first list with the third point of the second list with automatic lacing. If I choose shortest I will get exactly the same result however if I, if I choose longest what it does is that it is joining the last item of the first list with the last item of the second list so that we finish up with the possible combinations between these two lists. However, these are not all the combinations. In order to get all the combinations, I have to choose cross product here with inlacing cross product and execute it. And you will see that we have all the possible combinations between all the points. This is why lacing is so, so, so important when it comes to Dynamo. You have to know which elements of the different list are combining. And now we are going to the seventh definition, the seventh and last one, which is code block. Ah! anymore. So what's a cold block? If you look for what's a cold block in the Dynamo Primer, cold blocks are a window deep into the science grid. The programming language at the heart of Dynamo, built from scratch to support and extraordinary recent wordfronts. Blah 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 blah. Okay, <laughs> you get a lot of text. What does a cold block actually do? It enables you to write things in a faster way. It is not written in a specific programming language. You get this note by double clicking on the Dynamo screen. And here you can write multiple things. Like you can declare variables. Also, you can de uh, declare lists, numbers, do operations, a whole lot of things. For instance, like this, I will de be declaring text. Really, it's just a way to write faster in Dynamo. Normally, you can do the same thing with a code block that you can do using a Dynamo node. If you look for anything in the Dynamo forum, you will probably be getting a whole lot of code block. Programmers are normally a little laid back. We want to keep things short and we want to keep things fast. We are automating tasks to save us time normally. So it is completely normal that we want to write faster and code block is the fastest way to do this and this is why you get the code block node with a double click. So what next? You should finally go and watch the next video where you actually will learn how to use Dynamo. Click here, you know you want it. And you can of course subscribe, it's free for the moment. Hurry up and do it now. We also have a Dynamo guide, I'm leaving it down below on the description.